Um, anyways, um, yeah, I wanted to talk about, so okay, what makes me qualified to be up here speaking to you about Filipino culture, okay? So I prepared a slideshow to talk about what makes a Filipino Filipino, right? Okay. So okay, let's you know let's let's start off with the first one. Let's start off with the first one. What is it? Vertically challenged. Vertically challenged. Okay. You know we may okay okay, but here's the thing though. Here's the thing though. Think about it. We sing. We dance. Right? We're smart. We're athletic. God had to nerf us some way. Some way. He had to just cut it off. Um, and it's funny because I think just Filipinos are the culture in the world that just love basketball the most. The, they just love basketball. But God just thought it was so funny to just, hey, let's make it short. Let's just make it short. Um, but yeah, you know, vertically challenged, that's got to be a prominent feature here. All right, next up we got, had a perm. Had a perm. Okay, can you believe that everyone here is a different person? Um, every, every single Filipino boy has had a perm in their life. It, it's what I call a canon event. Okay? Where when you see a Filipino boy getting his perm in grade seven, you can't stop it, okay? This is, cruci this is, what do you call it? Um, essential, essential to their upbringing. This, this somehow builds something in us. I don't know what, what it, it, it develops. It's just this perm phase, okay? This, this is essential for a Filipino, all right? Okay, next slide. Has this jacket? By a raise of hands, who has this jacket? Guys, look around. Every Filipino has, has this jacket, and this specific one too. Where does it come from? <laughs> like, really? Where does it come from? I, I swear, I've had this jacket since I was a kid. It just spawns in our closet. Like, when, when a Filipino boy is born, or a, girl is, a female is born, it's the default skin. It's, it's the main setting. The, the, that's the general setting, okay? This, this jacket right here, it just appears somehow. Okay. Token white guy in the family. I don't know, but I, guys, listen, listen, guys. I've been, okay, I'm from BC, and I've seen so many Filipino families in BC. I've been to Winnipeg, I've been, I've been to Ontario, I've been to Saskatchewan. Guys, there is a white guy in every family. How? I don't know, but you just know that some auntie got a green card, okay? So, so it's cool, it's cool, I guess. But honestly, they're, they're some of the coolest people ever. And you know, like, when they speak Filipino back to you, it's, it's, it's just amazing. It's just like, you know, you, you dap up your sister, hey, what's up? You dap up your favorite cousin, oh, what's good, man? Kamusta po? Oh, like, that's how they greet you. Like, it's just, whoa. <laughs> But um, anyways, moving on. Moving on, we got had this ice cream. This ice cream is delicious. You guys have got to try this. I feel like every Filipino kid has grown up having it. Next slide. No, you haven't. You've never had this ice cream because it's always food in it. Why? Why do our Why do our moms do that? Like, uh, I come home and I'm like, I'm ready to do, I open the freezer and I'm like, oh, I'm ready for this delicious ubi dessert and it's like fish, it's like, it's like some adobo that was frozen like, from like four days ago from the party, like, guys, like, that's why I have trust issues now, like, I talk to my therapist about this, this moment here, this is growing, this is quintessential for Filipino development, this right here, okay? All right, moving on, what we got? Yeah. Guys, guys, this plate, it's so specific, but I'm not even joking. Every Filipino has this plate somehow. Guys, raise your hands if you have this plate. Yeah. What? You know what? I was actually making this slide one hour ago, and I thought about it. Wait, okay, I haven't even talked to anybody. I just knew. I 
somehow every Filipino has this way. That I, what is, where do you get it? Where do you get it from? Why do we all have it? No, right. I mean, it's cool. It's like, this is like my childhood right here. Okay, anyways, moving on, we got. Bring Predestined future, okay? Okay, listen. Okay, I, I just want to know by the show of hands who here is in the Burning uh, nursing program? Guys, look around you. Guys, look around you. It's all Filipinos. Any event you go to, just know that you will be the safest ever. If you had a heart attack, if you somehow get, I don't know, you fall unconscious, there's gonna be a Filipino nurse there. Put the gold gun press on his head. It was like 80% of all nurses are Filipino in the U.S. or something like that. Like, I was just so shocked. And I, you know, like growing up, I didn't want to be a nurse. I told my mom, mom, I want to be an artist. I'm gonna draw. Who told you you could draw? <laughs> I know I didn't. Mom, like, mom, maybe I want to be a comedian or something like that. Who told you your body? <laughs> Do you see any clowns in our family? Your uncle's a nurse? Your sister's a nurse? Your dad's a nurse? And you want to be a comedian? <laughs> Ay, nako. Sus Maria. Why can't you just support me? But, okay, anyways. <laughs> Moving on. Has been to the motherland at least once. Guys. Guys, you can't be Filipino if you haven't touched it at least once, okay? And, and what's funny is... Every, like, my mom always over-exaggerates, you know, going to the Philippines. She, she paints it as this sort of, like, I'm sorry, like, hellscape. Like, I, I, like, I remember recently, because my, my, me and my siblings are planning a trip to the Philippines alone uh, next coming Christmas, right? And I remember I told my mom that, Mom, uh, we're going to the Philippines um, uh, during Christmas next year. And she, she replies to me. The Philippines without us? It's so dangerous! I'm like, Mom, Mom, we're gonna be fine. She's like, you know what? I heard a story that one day that there was this boy and his, and his, and his sister and he got kidnapped and he got put in a van and then there's another man that followed it and then there's another man and then there's a pterodactyl that came and picked up the people and then there's Manny Pacquiao and he came and died. Someone tosses me a knife and welcome to the Philippines! Oh my god! <laughs> Anyways, and that's another thing. Like, they love over exaggerating things. Like, I don't know how many Filipinos in here have got their ears pierced. I have my ears pierced. <laughs> <laughs> don't get it done. Just <laughs> don't get it done. Finally, um, kind, loving, and unmatchable hospitality. Every Filipino household I've been to, I have no clue who they are. They're my aunties. They're always asking me if I've eaten, if I'm full, if I'm cared for, what university I'm going to, how I am. Like, they are some of the most loving people. And I know that some Filipinos here, um, parents have a hard time saying, I love you. Um, and I know that's a universal experience, but they show their love through their acts of services, through the meals they make you every day for lunch going up, through buying you gifts on Christmas, through bringing you to Berman and maybe paying for your university. They worked their butts off for you to be here, and that's their way of saying, I love you. And that's something I want for all the Filipinos here to never forget, that your parents love you, and that Filipino people are one of the best hardworking people in the world. So that is, that is what makes me, us, a Filipino. <laughs>